44 years after the first large international summit, which was held in Brazil, to discuss the looming environmental crises, people are finally awakening in government positions. Not many, but some. From 196 countries are going to convene this autumn in Glasgow, Scotland. Many are now saying we're past the breaking point. We've never had a time in history of the entire planet Earth that there's more of a species kill-off. More species are dying today than ever in the past. Fires are raging throughout the planet Earth. Floods are rising and storms are getting stronger. Food shortages are now becoming evident and people have not changed their ways, but fear is finally presenting itself. It should be the fear of self, the fear of human frailty. Looking at our own lives and seeing why the earth is sick is reflective. It's a mirror of one another. Early this morning, I was reading about the biome within the intestinal tract and how it has thousands. At this moment, we know 36,000 bacteria. It represents the ecosystem of the planet Earth. And you just have to have one bacteria that's too high or too low, and the entire balance is off. This interconnectedness has always been here. But we, with our arrogance, with our industrial revolution, with our technological age, and our lack of empathy and compassion and foresight and insight and hindsight, have dug a deep hole. I believe it's never too late. But it must start with you. You have got to make decisions based upon what you believe is best, not only for you, but for everyone else that you know on the earth and the earth itself. If you're not making a choice to eat an organic plant-based diet, you are a major part of the problem. Here at Hippocrates, we take it one step more. This is an energy concern. We eat it as all other creatures do on earth, and it's raw, unadulterated form. We've been watching the results of that in a clinical setting now ever since the 1950s. I was marching in 1969 on the first Earth Day, talking about the problems that were going to arise. Well, we're deep into those problems now. And those are becoming so clear to us all that our actions are powerfully, if you're not making sure that you exercise by walking more than just sitting down and getting into a car every time you have a whim to do something, you're part of the problem. If in fact, you don't stand up and start to campaign against all of the ills of the petrochemical industry, the meat industry, the dairy industry, and the factories that spew chemicals into the water and the air, make inexpensive products for you, you're part of the problem. And this is not something that is theological here at Hippocrates or in my life. This is a way I've been living ever since 1970. Have gratitude and respect and honor the life that you have. And understand, as Chief Seattle said so wisely, that we are just temporary keepers of the earth. This is not something that we control that we have to pass it on to the next generation. That generation may be your children, your grandchildren. We can no longer say that this isn't science. It's so much of a science today that when 196 countries convene, they're actually trying to find a solution that we don't perish as a humanity. So don't wait until some leadership guides you. Guide yourself to clean up the earth and to protect the earth.
we're just people doing our job. You should be a person that joins us in a compassionate mission to heal self and all else. And that mission will take away the darkness that reigns on the earth today. And you as an individual are important. It's always been one individual that stood strong and spoke clear and loud that led us into the new direction of progress. It's no longer a situation where we can sit by the wayside. Either we're the problem or we're the solution. Wouldn't you rather be a solution? Contributing and doing the right thing is the most powerful agent that has ever been existing on this very planet that we all share. Until the next time, be well.